look, um, we're trying to get through many of these particular types of interviews before Christmas, and that is there are a whole lot of new ministers uh, and there are even new portfolios in this government. Um, and for some reason, I don't know, we seem to find it easier um, getting these people interviews, in for interviews than we did on the pre, under the previous administration. Um, and this government has clearly set out a 49-point agenda, but it has got change and alteration in a whole lot of areas. And one area that many New Zealanders would say is um, of super high priority, though it's difficult to get your head around, is mental health. And we have, for the first time, got a mental health minister in this coalition uh, government. His name is Matt Ducey. He's been Parliament what, uh, since, I think, t- 2014. So he's no newbie. Uh, not a guy with the highest profile in the world. He lives in Rangiora. And he joins us uh, on... He's also, by the way, the Minister of Tourism. We'll have a quick chat about that as well. But he joins us uh, on the line uh, now. Uh, Minister, congratulations on your appointment and welcome to the platform. Thanks, Sean. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, look, great to have a new job, but I'm mindful um, pretty much anyone can get a new job. Uh, it's more about the delivery and the job, and that's what I'll be focused on. Yeah. What do you want to deliver? Why have a mental health minister? What is your objective? What is your program of work as mental health minister? Yeah, well, good question. And you touched a bit on it in your intro, is that uh, the reality is, is I've got around the country in the last six years as the opposition mental health spokesperson, It's very clear that um, one of the biggest issues for many Kiwis is a better mental health system. And quite rightly, they're calling on not only government, but parliament um, as a whole to respond. Uh, And I think uh, for me, it's been very clear over a number of years, uh, looking at examples in uh, comparable countries overseas, I think the time had come to have uh, a standalone mental health minister who could solely focus on the mental health system. Um, But actually, mental health is wider than just health, uh, and that's why a mental health minister who can work across the silos of government uh, advocate better for those with mental health needs and get some results in uh, other government areas, for example, uh, corrections, prisons, education, and and so forth. So it's an area I'm pretty passionate about. Uh, I had my own mental health issues when I was younger, which uh, then led me to actually decide to go and work in the mental health field. I worked for a number of years, both here and for the British NHS before coming back and getting into politics. So, Madam, what capacity capacity did you work in mental health in? Yeah, well, I worked uh, first off in the um, front line. I I trained in counselling psychology, primarily around uh, young people and, and adolescents. Uh, That took me to work in a borough called Hackney in the east end of London, which is quite a a high-needs area. And then I say I got shoulder tapped for the dark side, which wasn't uh, politics, but management, as the NHS put me through their leadership development program. But I learned pretty quickly shape, design and delivery of services had a big impact on the therapeutic outcome as much as the frontline work. So... Look, I was, I was really um, humbled and privileged to have the opportunities to be involved in um, some significant organisations like the Tavistock Clinic, which is internationally renowned. Um, and so I bring that experience... Well, well, is that the one that did all the gender role. transition stuff and had to close? Yeah, it, it, it did have that uh, in the portfolio of services. Well, it, it, I don't know that it's successful. It's, uh, it's, it's renowned as... as having made terrible decisions, Matt, and probably not in your time, and having to no, be closed well, down because of its gender-transitioning ideologies. Y- yes, well, the, the Tavistock Clinic is a broad range of services, okay. research, and the largest postgraduate education provider right. in Europe, yeah. Mm. Now, Matt, you don't sound like a guy who plays the victim, mate. Can you just give us some insight? You said you had had some issues. What were they? Can you can you talk about them? I don't want to invade your privacy, but but I think That's it's right. relevant I'm, to how you approach this job. I've been pretty open about it. Um, it was largely to do with a serious car accident I had in my late teenage years. I was thrown out a back windscreen of a car that um, uh, at over a hundred uh, kilometres an hour as it was um, rolling uh, end to end. Uh, that led to several weeks uh, in hospital with um, head injuries. 
And what was interesting, Sean, when I look back now, that was uh, late 80s. Uh, I had several follow-up appointments about broken bones, but no one actually said uh, you've had a hell of a knock and blow to the head. You need to be aware of this and potentially uh, receive some support. So what happened uh, over a, a couple of years is I was very frustrated uh, couldn't concentrate. Now I know what was anxiety and depression. Uh, wow. Quite a lot of isolation as I was through from things as yeah. things got progressively worse. Uh, and everyone said, well, you need to get help. And, you know, back then I was, I was a young bloke. I sort of drank a few beers and played rugby. And I thought, well, I'm... I'm well, not look, proof. That, but She'll it, be right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I got to the point where, uh, you know... I, I, I had to, and and like I say, it literally changed my life. Not only because now I can manage my be- mental health; it's not always good, but I I can have a better relationship with it. But I looked at that person who helped me and thought, actually, I'd like to do your job to help other people. Wow. Okay. Well, Matt, look, I think back. Gosh, I can remember going to to Jenny Shipley's release on her, her inquiry into mental health. It seems to me every second week the government's announcing another billion or 500 million for mental health and it's all going to be fixed. And damn it, it's not, and it hasn't been. Why not? We throw a lot of money at this. Yeah, I, look, I think mental health has been hugely politicised um, over the last few years. Uh, I've been very clear I'd like to take uh, a bipartisan approach. I set up the cross-party mental health group with Chloe Swarbrick and Louisa Wall, I think that is the approach to take in mental How health. How can you take a bipartisan public. approach with opposition parties who say your party in general and the government you represent are racist, white colonialist misogynists? That must be difficult. Well, well, that's, that, that's the reality of life, isn't it? At times we're going to disagree, but I'm a firm believer and uh, my international travels confirm this for me. In fact, there's so much differences out there amongst people, but actually there's a huge amount of commonalities. Yeah. And I think there's potential to get common ground mm. on this. And the reason I say it's been overly politicised is that um, when you look at uh, the announcements the former government made and its delivery, it's just night and day. And in fact, what's been quite concerning, and I think actually... It's just indefensible, is what I've seen and heard since becoming the minister uh, from the briefings and the officials. Okay, well, give us a couple of examples. It's become very clear that when announcements were made, even the officials in the departments at the time knew those announcements couldn't be delivered on. And I think what we got caught up with in the last government... Could you give us uh, an example, please? uh, ...sound bites... Um, Could you give us an example, was, Matt, of a policy well, that was well, announced I, I, that couldn't be delivered? Well, well, if you look at uh, the most recent announcement of $100 million uh, uh, over a year ago in the last budget, no, none of that has even started, let alone a dollar. Okay, what was it for with $100 million? Yeah. The $100 million was for a range of initiatives from uh, half a dozen crisis response services, to um, work for And the money wasn't there or it just didn't get spent? Well, it, 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 it's not been spent, but actually the, the, the easy part, Sean, to be frank, would be to get out there and just say 100 million for this, 100 million for that. But actually, there's real structural issues in the system. And I'll give you one example it's workforce. So you can announce all the money you want, but if you don't have the mental health professionals to deliver it, Mm. those services are not going to get off the ground. And it's been very clear that is the problem with the last government. 